الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد This is the final clip taken from the audio book that we've been going through that we've created uh, written by Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr may Allah preserve him on the benefits of saying Subhanallah Walhamdulillah La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar And the Sheikh says that these are the 12 benefits that he has been able to summarize for us but he says وَمَنْ يَتَأَمَّلْ هَذِهِ الْفَدَاءِ الْمُتَقَدِّمَةِ Whoever is to contemplate on these 12 that have preceded, يَجِدْ أَنَّهَا أَذِيمَةٌ جِدَّا He will then realize that these 12 are immense for the believer. Absolutely immense. These words are immense. The station that you can attain for yourself through these words are immense. The benefits that they will bring for the Abdul Mu'min, for the believing servant, are immense. The expiation that you will get is immense. The Shaykh says, then what seems to be the hidden benefit from all of these uh, virtuous uh, benefits that we can get for ourselves, Wallahu A'lam, is saying that this is perhaps one of the things that we can get. One of the benefits that he hasn't mentioned, which is part of the book, but he's mentioning here as part of his conclusion, is that you will learn and contemplate and recite and get a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his names and his attributes the more you say these words. For subhanallah yandarij tahtaha asma'at tanzi. When you say subhanallah, and he is going to now explain shortly what these words mean, what does subhanallah actually mean, what does alhamdulillah actually mean, what does la ilaha illallah actually mean, and what does Allahu Akbar actually mean. I'm sure every single one of us know the translation of it, but what is the actual definition? The Shaykh is going to give that for us. But at this point here, he's saying when you say subhanallah, you are connecting yourself to distancing and disassociating Allah from any kind of imperfection, and there are names and attributes for that, such as al-Quddus and as-Salam. When you say Alhamdulillah Mushtamilatun ala ithbat anwa al kamal lillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. The more you say Alhamdulillah, whether you realize it or not, the more you say Subhanallah, whether you realize it or not, the more you're getting close to Allah through His names and attributes. And the more you learn and the more you contemplate, Subhanallah will open that door of Tawheed for you. Same when it comes to Alhamdulillah. He is saying here, when you say Alhamdulillah, you are affirming the completion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are removing any kind of imperfection from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala in His names and attributes and what He decrees and from His actions subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the servant says Alhamdulillah, constantly he is saying, how perfect is Allah, how perfect is Allah. Even if he doesn't know what he is saying, he is getting a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unlike the one who doesn't say it, won't get. But the more he has ilm of it, of saying Alhamdulillah, the more perfection he will attribute to Allah, and the more perfection he attributes to Allah, the more perfection he will gain for himself as a slave. Wallahu Akbar, fiha takbir, in saying Allahu Akbar, is magnifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'zeem. It is making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that servant greater than anything that exists. وَأَنَّهُ لَا يُحْسِي أَهَدٌ الثَّنَاءَ And nobody can praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the creation to the level that he deserves subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ كَانَ كَذَلِكْ فَلَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ اي لَا مَعْبُودْ حَقٌ سِوَاه what he has given us benefits of subhanallah just now in this conclusion alhamdulillah allahu akbar allah becomes the greatest thing in that person's life when it comes to la ilaha illallah this person will become a devout servant worshiping allah alone none other than him subhanahu wa ta'ala now the shaykh goes on to give us the precise definitions of these four words subhanallah is known as tasbih this is when you make tanzihatun lillah or tanzihun lillah and kulli ma yuliku bih. When you remove any kind of imperfection of Allah. So what does subhanallah mean? Often people will say it means glory be to Allah. Glory be to Allah. Subhanallah basically means you are removing any kind of imperfection from Allah. 
Alhamdulillah, also referred to as Tahmeed. What does Tahmeed mean? Ithbatun li anwa il kamal lilla fi asmahihi wa sifatihi wa afale. Fi asmahihi wa sifatihi wa afale. You affirm completion and perfection to Allah in His names, in His attributes and His actions. Nothing ever happens except that there is perfection in Allah for it. Tahleel is La ilaha illallah. Another way of saying La ilaha illallah is Tahleel. What is La ilaha illallah? He says the definition of saying La ilaha illallah Ikhlasun wa tawheedun lillah. Being sincere and doing deeds only for the sake of Allah and the oneness of Allah worshipping Him alone. Wa bara'atun min shirk. And disassociating from any kind of partnerships with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether that's in worship whether that's in lordship or whether that's in his names and his attributes with takbir another way of saying Allahu Akbar is a takbir ifbatun li'idhamatillah affirmation of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa annahu la shay'un akbar min and there is nothing that is greater than him subhanahu wa ta'ala so the Shaykh then ends with a final word by saying, how amazing are these words? How perfect are these words? And how much greatness can you can get from these words? Let's remind ourselves again of the 12 benefits that he has given. Number one, when you say these words, you will get the reward like you are reciting Quran. This is because, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar, the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah have said these are uncreated because they are part of the Qur'an. Therefore, when you say these words, it connects a person to Allah and his tawheed and his speech in like no way else. Benefit number one. Benefit number two. It is better than the dunya and all it contains. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar, is better than the dunya and all it contains. What does that mean? It connects the believer to the akhirah. Benefit number three, when you say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, it is as if you have freed a hundred slaves, it is as if you have prepared a hundred horses, and it is as if you have given a hundred sacrifices. In this is wealth, in this is prosperity, in this is strength. When you say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, it forgives and expiates for you your sins, O believer, and even the effects of the sins. It cleans you. Benefit number five. When you say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, plantations are brought forth for you in Jannah. Therefore, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah is your capital assets. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar is actual currency. Because when you go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you enter into Jannah, you will find your house built based on what you have said from subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. No mortgage, just dhikr. Number six, no one is better than the person who says, la, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. On the day of judgment, no one will be better than this person except this person said it more. Now here we have another thing that the ulama have mentioned is... Are humans better or are angels better? Now, we don't want to get into this right now. But this now is raising you to the level of perhaps even angels. Because some angels have been created just to say subhanAllah until your muqiyam. And some of them have been created just to say alhamdulillah until your muqiyam. And some of them have been created just to be in ruku and they will remain like that until your muqiyam and some in sujood. Benefit number six, the shaykh said, that no one is better than the person who says Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. Look at the level that you are being raised to that of an angel. And elevation from humans and jinn above others is based on this. Number seven. They have been chosen by Allah, these words. But now here the benefit is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen these words and you are the one that says it, what does that say about you? That means you are a chosen servant. Chosen words for chosen servants. Benefit number eight. It will protect a person from the hellfire. It will intercede for you on a day when your family and your friends and your wealth and everything that you knew and connected yourself into the dunya 
perhaps will avail you or not avail you. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar will protect you and it will intercede on your behalf. Number nine. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. When you utter these words, it is taken by an angel and it carried up past the sun, past the moon, past the sama dunya, up until it reaches the arsh of Ar-Rahman and it buzzes like the buzz of the buzzing of a, of, of a bee. And it surrounds the arsh of Ar-Rahman with that buzzing, making itself noticed to your Lord. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar is heavy on the scales. We all need things that are going to be heavy on the scale. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that our salat and our siyam and our sadaqah and our good deeds perhaps is not going to be enough. We need these words to make our scales heavy. Number 11. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar is a form of sadaqah. The Prophet wasallam came to teach us that sadaqah and charity is not just financial. Sadaqah can be verbal. Sadaqah is any form of goodness that comes from yourself. Now when you say subhanallah, walhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, is it possible that a person who says these words with sincerity, knowing what they are based on what the Shaykh has said in this conclusion, that this person will then utter insults and swear and get angry and not be able to control his tongue? Not possible. Sadaqah. Number 11. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar is a sadaqah that comes from your tongue which helps the believer to program himself and herself to say that what is good. And the last benefit that we took in the session before this one, in the clip before this one, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after he taught the person to say these words, he took his hand, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as if he is taking your hand, we ask Allah, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that we are with him in the Akhirah. He took his hand, and he showed him off to the, the, the companions and he said, This person has filled his hands with goodness. This is a message for me and it is for you. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar will fill your hands with goodness. These are just some of the benefits, 12. There are plenty more that the Shaykh has not mentioned. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these are a proof for us and not against us, Yawm al for us and our loved ones. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to connect ourselves back to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dhikr of him in the best of manner, in a manner that he is pleased with for us, for us and the Muslim ummah that we return back to his religion with the best of returning. Hada, wallahu a'lam, sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad.